Right, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to today's video, which, and I do apologize if this is the case, which might turn into a bit of a rant. But it, I don't mean for it to turn into a bit of a rant, but it might happen. Today, I'm gonna talk about which lens you should buy for your landscape photography. If you could only have one lens for your landscape photography, which lens should it be? I'm gonna answer that question. In fact, I'm gonna answer it right now. The answer to that question is there is no answer. There is no answer. There is no one lens for landscape photography. And the problem is there's a lot of confusing, contradictory information out there. And I know that for a fact because I've put that information out there. <laughs> so have other people. So today I just want to clear everything up. Um, I get asked that question a lot, right? Someone might have a bit of money and they're upgrading their kit and they want to know which lens they should buy for their camera. Now I'm not talking about branding or manufacturers, I'm talking about, well, generally focal length. So, you know, from super wide to a long lens, which is going to improve your photography the most. So yeah, people might have a bit of money and they want to upgrade their lens. So what they might do is turn to YouTube and type in which lens should I buy for landscape photography and what they'll find is lots of information. Some saying the 16 to 35 is the only lens they need and someone else might say 70 to 200 is the only lens they need. And I know because I've <laughs> made both of these videos and in fact I made a video about a week ago suggesting that you should only go out with two prime lenses or one zoom lens to really improve your photography and there is a lot of truth in that. Um, but here's the thing, I'm, uh, I'll try and answer this question as honestly as I can, there is no one lens, but that doesn't help you, it doesn't help the person who has a bit of hard-earned money that they want to invest in some new glass for their camera to improve the quality of their images or expand their photography. Right, so let me try and be very practical about this and see if I can act genuinely give you advice about lenses for landscape photography. Because let's face it, these are not cheap. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, as much as I hate to admit it, the more expensive lenses, the much better quality images you'll get. The true, that cannot be said about cameras, that's different. Now, uh, let's give you some practical advice very quickly before I move on to the more philosophical side of this debate about which lens is best for landscape photography. Um, the, the, if you shoot seascapes, right, you spend a lot of time on the coast, get a 16 to 35, it's fantastic. If you like to shoot woodland images and intimate scenes, get a 24 to 70. You know, this is pretty much gonna do you for most of your requirements. If you go hiking and you like shooting in the mountains, alpine glow on a snowy peak, that kind of thing, get a 70 to 200. That's it, that's about as much advice as I would dare give when it comes to lenses for landscape photography. Now, what you can do is you can go into Lightroom and you can see which focal length you use the most and then maybe upgrade that lens. I did this and I actually found the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 were about neck and neck. But then that doesn't help me much either because I have images taken with the 16 to 35 that I absolutely love and can't imagine not having. <laughs> so that doesn't help. The truth is, there are three ways to approach this. Three ways to approach the question of which lens or lenses should I have for landscape photography. Way number one is, um, you know, the affordable route, which is to get the holy trinity, such as this, but get the uh, cheaper versions. So the kit lenses or the third party manufacturers. But the problem with kit lenses is that the quality isn't as good. It isn't even close to as good as like a professional lens. And that's why there is a huge price difference. Now kit lenses are great because they get new photographers out there and experiencing different focal lengths and what's possible. But in my experience from me personally and from other photographers, you know, I've chatted to over the years, um, you very, very quickly grow out of your kit lenses, very quickly. So, you know, after a while, you start to want to move up to something better. That's what this video is about. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed the edit, it's been an edit, but yeah, move, you know. Yeah, that's, you know, that's option one, kit lenses, but you know, you might, grow out of them in a pretty short space of time. The second option is to splash the cash 
and get them all. And I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Uh, that's what I would do, you know. I ult I'm going to have to upgrade my camera soon enough. I'm on the Canon 5D Mark IV at the moment, and no doubt I'm going to upgrade to a later mirrorless model at some point. And with that, unfortunately, I'll need to buy new lenses. You know, I might switch manufacturer. I don't know yet. But I will have to buy lenses. And I'm in a very fortunate position that I do this full time, so I will want to buy all of the lenses, all the way from 16 all the way up to 400, you know, that 100, 400, 16 to 35, 70 to 200, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, all of them, every lens, every lens. But that, again, doesn't help most of the people watching this video. Um, so, yeah, the likelihood is you're going to have a bit of money and you want to invest in one lens, only one, and that might be your go-to lens. Or perhaps you do a lot of hiking with your photography or long walks and you don't want to carry all of the gear. Um, which lens, which lens, which lens, which lens? Well, as I mentioned, there is no one lens, but the way to get around it, the way to get around the question of which lens for your landscape photography is, uh, sorry, I'm laughing because I've realized how many times I've asked that question, which lens for your landscape photography. The way to get around that question and to get past that question is to be okay with not getting the shot. Now, my photography has changed over the past few years, and one of the biggest changes that's happened with my photography is not the introduction of a new lens or piece of kit, but it is the acceptance of the fact that I won't always get a shot. That is liberating. Now, I appreciate it. A lot of people do this as a, ho as a hobby, as a part-time hobby, right? And you, it is going to hurt when you only have one weekend to go and shoot and you don't get the light or you miss the light or you miss a shot because you haven't got the right tools. I've been there. Trust me, I've been there. I used to be one of these guys who would drive down the road, see a beautiful sunset and it would hurt me. It would physically hurt because I can't pull over and get the shot. Not anymore. I'm much more okay with not being out there with my camera. I don't have that fear of missing out because I know that the sun will rise again. <laughs> And the sun will set again and a new day will dawn and so on and so forth. The seasons turn, life goes on. So one of the biggest, more positive changes to my photography of late is that it's the acceptance and being okay with not getting an image. Now, if you can achieve that, then you'll be much happier going out with just one lens because you won't be looking for other shots that you can't get. And you won't be disappointed when you can't get the lake and the mountain in. Instead, you might be trying to create an image that's a little bit different by going in at a focal length, longer focal length and only getting a part of the lake in or a part of the mountain. Um, so, yeah, it's tough and it takes time, but it's liberating and it's fantastic. And you really start to enjoy the, the true meaning of photography or the true meaning of landscape photography, which isn't to be the biggest, best man on Instagram, or woman on Instagram. It's to be out there, connect with the outdoors, and just have you know, a nice moment to yourself. So, yeah, there you go, there's the answer. You know, I'm, I go out with my film cameras, which only has one or two lenses, and I'm okay with not being able to get those shots. Now, I fully appreciate that if you're going on a trip, a very expensive trip overseas, a once in a lifetime photography trip, then that's different. And if you're a commercial photographer, obviously that's different. My advice, if you're going on a trip, would be uh, hire some, rent, rent some lenses, definitely. And then you know that you have the, the tool that you might need to get the shot that you can see. But with your day-to-day -day photography, you know, in the meantime, before you can save up and get the next lens for your kit, just be okay with not having it and try and master the lens that you do have. Um, I kind of hope that that answers the question or at least sheds a bit of light on it because I know that it's a, a really frustrating topic, uh, especially if you're new to photography. You just go, you should get this lens or this lens. Oh man, it drive you crazy. It drove me crazy and they're so expensive, you can't just go and pick up both of them. So yeah, there you go. Don't stress about the lens. Try instead to just be okay with not getting an epic image every time you go out. You know, it's 
difficult. Social media is a nasty, nasty thing. It really is. It's designed to make you lust after things. It's designed to make you want more. It shows you the best images, the best, the brightest, the most epic photographs. You know, Instagram is just constantly refreshing with these unattainable images that aren't even real. And that oh, just makes you think that, you know, maybe it's the lens. You know, it's just awful. Just, just understand that what you see online isn't reality. Most people don't get a shot every time they go out. There you go. So I do hope that, that my little rant, I told you it would be a rant, is, uh, <laughs> yeah, helpful. I'm not very good at these videos. I don't really do gear videos. Um, so yeah, I hope you, if you did enjoy this video, give it a like. Uh, it's the best thing you can do for this channel is to hit the like button. Simple as that, the best way to support the channel. The second best way to support the channel, to buy my book. And the third best way to support the channel is to buy my calendar. And the fourth way is to buy the calendar and the book. And the fifth way is to buy the calendar, the book, and hit the like button, and leave a comment, and share the video. There you go. Right, um, I better go. It's already midday, and uh, I've got to get this video uploaded. I genuinely help, help? I genuinely hope this helps you solve the question, the age-old riddle as to which lens is best for landscape photography. All right, cheers guys, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right, bye, 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 bye.